In seat number six is Dr. Iman Jahangir. Iman is a cardiologist and associate professor of medicine and radiology at Vanderbilt University. His flight today was made possible by Moondao, an organization whose mission is to accelerate a multi-planetary future. This is Iman Jahangir, the first Nashvilleian in space. So I was looking the other day to see how many humans have gone to space because obviously you want to know what number you are, right? Like you are trying to get to space, but it is also kind of cool to see where you are in the lineup. And one app said I was 707. It was called Supercluster. And I was quickly corrected by one of the people I follow. I think it's the Space Almanac account. And he said, I am officially the 704th person to go to space. So I was born in Iran and I had come to this earth after the revolution. So we had a big revolution in 1978 where a lot of things changed uh, from a monarchy to this Islamic government. And then subsequently, when I was born, there was a war with Iran and Iraq that lasted for eight years. So it started in 1980 to about 1988. So my first memory of the skies is really bomb sirens going off and running down to the basement. And I was little, but I remember the sound and just having to hustle down to the basement with my family. And then when we came here to the States, you know, there was none of that, right? Like there were no bomb sirens. We didn't have to worry about, worry about running down into the basement. And so things were much more peaceful. And I remember really the first trigger I had of like space as a thing was I was probably, I was too short to ride the rides. So I was probably like six or seven. And we went to the Space and Rocket Center down in Huntsville, Alabama, which is only two hours away. And I remember seeing these huge rockets that took humans to the moon, and I was blown away that one, humans could create these, two, that these were, you know, my first encounter with these things were weapons of war, and now we've made them into something much nicer. And then three, that it took that big of a rocket to get this tiny capsule all the way to the moon, which was amazing. Um, and so that was my first, like, inkling that, like, oh yeah, space is, like, very cool. So I came to the United States as a four-year-old and we came to Nashville, uh, Tennessee from Tehran, Iran. So it was like moving from New York City to Nashville in 1984, there wasn't a lot going on here. But to me, it was always the place of both dreams where you know a kid could come and dream big. We had a big family, we'd run around in each other's yards and imagine being whatever we wanted. In my case, it was being an astronaut. So I've always grown up with this place in my heart where Nashville is both home, so it's where I can come back and see family, see friends, and have that warmth, but also a place where I, people can come to dream. Now, it's cliche because a lot of people, people come to dream about music in Nashville, uh, and I think that's great. I think there's great musicians, but for me, it's just dreaming on a larger scale. You know, whatever you could want is here. Uh, and so I think as a kid growing up, being surrounded by all that and being in a situation where education was always pushed on us, there was just opportunities were endless. I think we're living in a great time for space where we're in the second space age. If you look at what these private companies are doing now, you have SpaceX that is going and ferrying people back and forth to space. They're building the Starship Heavy, which is gonna be like having a cargo ship that can take things to space at a much cheaper cost and take more humans to space. And that's gonna happen in the next, I think in the next five, 10 years, we're definitely gonna be seeing that going up and down. You have New Glenn being built by Blue Origin. And then you have other companies working on things like Blue Origin's working on Orbital Reef, which is like a, a space station, private space station that they wanna put up. So I think in the next 10 years, there will be lots of humans that are not NASA astronauts, just private citizens like you and me, working and living in low earth orbit. You're gonna need all types of people when you're having space stations because it's not just doing science or you know you need artists to kind of draw the earth or describe it. You need photographers and filmographers to really to really look and be able to represent that back to the people on earth. You're gonna need the maintenance crew, you're gonna need the construction workers, the welders, I mean anything you think of, and that includes doctors, particularly if you're sending up people that are older or have more medical problems, which the hope would be that anyone who wants to go could go. The biggest thing for young people to know is that one, you can follow kind of two passions, so you don't have to 
just say, oh, I'm just going to be a doctor. But you can be a doctor and also try to become an astronaut. You could be a filmographer and also try to become, you know, a great scuba diver. And if you do that and you kind of set your goal to it, you'll find ways to achieve it with small steps. You will find people that also support you that you can surround yourself with. Because it's hard to have a dream if you don't have people around you that also have a similar dream. So it is important to find communities that support you. And now with the internet, I think it becomes easier and easier because there are groups you can find. Touchdown, a successful touchdown of the booster for the NS-26 mission.